Welcome to Beside the Burn for Friday the 29th of September. Hard to believe that we are near the end of another month and we have been uh, joining together in these uh, devotionals each day. Uh, This is Friday and we have our Friday book club um, each week and uh, we are going through a book together at the moment. I I sort of had started off by planning to uh, just give you a a big overview of the book uh, but there's been so much in it so far that I've just been sharing a, a, a chapter or a couple of chapters at a time and I hope that Maybe you get the book and you read it, but even if you're not getting the book, I hope that there are truths here that make you just think about Jesus in a different way. The book, as you know, is called Gentle and Lowly. It is all about the heart of Jesus Christ. And the illustration that Dean Ortland, the author, is using is that we're taking Jesus' heart and we're examining it like a, a diamond, holding it up to the light, turning it round and looking at different aspects, different faces uh, of Jesus' heart. And in each chapter, he just takes one verse and looks at it in a bit of detail and tries to see how that relates to Christ's heart and how it relates to us as sinners and our relationship with Jesus. Today I'm going to try and cover uh, two chapters. Uh, We're going to start in chapter 5 and then uh, hopefully we're also going to go into chapter 6 as well. So in chapter 5 we discover that Jesus can deal gently with us. And if we read Hebrews 5 and verse 2, there we find Jesus is able to deal gently with us with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. If you read the um, English Standard Version, it says he can deal gently with the ignorant or wayward. Uh, So there we have it, those who are ignorant or those who are going astray. And really, Hebrews, as we've been discovering in our journey through Exodus, is in the Bible to tell us what it means for Jesus to be our priest. The true priest of whom every other is just a shadow and to whom every other is a pointer. So whenever we read about the priests in the Old Testament, they're all pointing forward to Jesus. And whenever we read Hebrews, we find out how Jesus is our priest. You see, the priests of Israel were sinners. They had to keep offering sacrifices, not just for the people, but also for themselves because they sinned. And to be able to come between God and the people meant that they had to purify themselves through sacrifice. The priests were there because we need somebody to represent us before God. And whenever we come into the New Testament and Jesus comes He is able to represent us before our Heavenly Father. He is able to deal gently with us because he knows what our weaknesses are like. He himself became human and came to this earth and has first-hand experience of what our weaknesses are and therefore he deals gently with us. And this is a wonderful truth that perhaps we take for granted and we often overlook. You see, Jesus is drawn to us in our sinfulness and we discover that he deals gently with us. We might expect, you see, Jesus to deal harshly with us. He sees that we are weak, he sees that we are sinful and therefore we think that he is a holy God and he will come and deal very harshly. We can't come to him, or whenever we come to him, he'll not turn us away. We discover that he deals gently. And this is hard for many people to understand because they expect God to be a God of wrath, as it were, rather than a God of gentleness. We saw last week that Jesus who suffers with us, he sympathises with us. In other words, Jesus deals gently. 
Now, he deals gently, not just with those who have sinned a little bit, and then deals really harshly with those who have committed the terrible sins. What we see here is that Jesus deals with gently with those who are ignorant and those who are going astray. There are two types of sin, the unwillful sin and the willful sin. In other words, there are sins that we commit without realising that they're sins, and then there are sins that we go out and actively embrace and take on. Here they are covered by the ignorant, those that don't know, and those who are going astray, those who deliberately sin. So Jesus here is dealing gently with everyone who sins. But there is a qualification for this gentleness. And that qualification is coming to Jesus. You see, it makes sense if you think about it. If we do not come to Jesus, then he will deal harshly with us. He will come in judgment and that judgment will be so fierce it's like a a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth we're told in the book of revelation but if we come to jesus he's gentle he's tender there is nobody who has ever come to jesus seeking forgiveness who has been turned away and punished It's only those who have stayed at a distance and rejected Jesus that are punished. Every single person who comes to him is dealt with gently. What an incredible saviour we have. We are to bring our mess to Jesus. And whenever we bring that mess and set it down before him, he doesn't tut at us, he doesn't tell us off, he doesn't throw punishments at us. Instead, he acts with restraint. Not because he doesn't understand what sin is. He truly understands what sin is because he went to the cross because of our sin. But he acts with restraint. He acts gently because he has a tender heart. Jesus does not punish anyone who comes to him Instead, he does what is fitting to his character. Jesus deals gently with you and I when we come to him. It's the only way that he knows how to act. As long as we fix our attention on our sin, then we will fail to see how we can ever be safe. But as long as we look to our high priest, we'll fail to see how we could ever be in danger. As we look to Jesus, we will only find gentleness. As we come to Jesus, we will only be treated gently because he understands our weaknesses. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray since he himself is subject to our weaknesses. So there we have this wonderful truth that Jesus is dealing gently with us. What we also find then in the next chapter, chapter 6, is that Jesus will not cast us out. And again, this is a wonderful truth that we have here and it is a a wonderful help and a wonderful encouragement to us. If we read John 6 and verse 37, All those the Father gives me will come to me, Jesus says, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. Here we have this wonderful promise. And this wonderful situation where Jesus is treating us this way. That whenever we come to him, he will not turn us away from him. I will never drive away. If you remember the King James version of this, I will in no wise cast you out. No wise cast you out. That is just such a comfort. 
In the book, um, Gentle and Lowly, on page 62, uh, there's a wonderful little dialogue, as it were, between the sinner and Jesus Christ. And it goes like this, where we may say, But I am a great sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast you out, says Christ. But I am an old sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I am a hard-hearted sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I am a backsliding sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I have served Satan all my days, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I have sinned against light, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I have sinned against mercy, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I have no good thing to bring with me, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. What a wonderful promise Jesus has given to us. We say, but I, and Jesus says, I will never cast out. And that is the wonderful, wonderful promise that we have. So every friend that we have has a limit, but Jesus has no limit. And Dean Ortland here gives us the illustration of a young child who is in the water with the father. The young child is holding on to their father in the water. And they're holding on to their father so that they are safe and so that they do not sink in the water and drown. But say it's the sea that they're in. And as they venture further out and the water gets deeper and the waves start to crash in and the waves get stronger and stronger, it's no longer the child holding on to the father but it is the now the father holding the child. And that's how it is with Christ. We cling to Christ, but only as a small child clings to their father. It is truly Christ that is holding us. So we turn to hold on to Christ, but Christ takes us and holds us firm. As the psalmist says, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. So here we have the promise once again as we think about Christ's heart. All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. What a promise. What a saviour. And let's celebrate him together today. Let's pray together, giving thanks for that. And let us also remember in our Let's Pray, uh, the Social Witness Council, the Council for Social Witness in our Presbyterian Church. Does a wonderful job, has many care homes and uh, helps in many practical ways to reach out with the gospel. And we're asked to pray for it today and especially uh, post-pandemic, the um, staffing levels in the homes. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we're giving you thanks once again for the heart of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he deals gently with us whenever we come to him, not harshly. And Lord, we're often tempted to think that you will only deal harshly with us and therefore we don't bring our sins to you. But Lord, just to unburden those sins and to ask for your forgiveness is such a blessing. We thank you as well, Lord, that you've promised that you will never cast us out no matter what we have done. And so we trust in you and we worship you today. Today, Lord, we also pray for the Council of Social Witness uh, within our Presbyterian Church. And we thank you uh, for all the work that is done in a practical way in many care homes and situations. But Lord, we pray specifically about staffing. 
post-pandemic, it's been difficult to recruit staff and we pray for some of the recruitment days coming up and we ask that the vacant posts would be filled with suitable and committed staff. And we thank you for the staff in those homes and the difference that they make to many people's lives. We also pray, Lord, for the health and social care sector. And we pray for those who work in that sector and feel under increasing pressure alongside the oncoming annual winter pressures that are coming up. Pray for wisdom and guidance for all those who are making decisions in response to these challenges. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.